God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. My name is Drew, and I'm an alcoholic. I'd like to welcome you to Writing in AA History and Area History. Um, our leader today is Steve C. from Area 72. He's the alternate delegate. Um, I've known Steve now for uh, four minutes, and <laughs> what I've already seen is that he's got a lot going on. I've know, uh, after knowing him for two minutes, he said, hey, I have a gift for you. So let's see if he can continue that love from here on out. I'd like to welcome Steve. Good morning, everyone. I'm Steve. I'm an alcoholic. My home group is Kitchen. It's in Seattle. It meets on Thursday night at 7.30, and it runs until 9 o'clock. We have a monthly business meeting. And I'm going to talk with you today about writing an area history. And this is somewhat about a project overview, and there are mechanics to managing a project, especially one that requires a lot of people to participate. But there's a spiritual message, too. And it was hard for me to figure out how to put that onto a slide. But this is all about what Michelle said last night and what Billy said last night. Carrying the message to an alcoholic who's suffering to let him know what it used to be like, what happened, what it's like now with respect to our service structure, which is a vital part of our life support system and our ability to stay sober. So with that in mind, we'll move on to this first slide, which is about Bill's thoughts <clears throat> about the archives. And at the beginning of the archives service, the archives workbook, Bill says, we are trying to build up extensive records, which will be of value to a future historian. Michelle said last night, what we want to do is connect the past with the present for the future. And that's what this is all about. And that's why it's worth our time. And that's why it's worth participation on a large scale within the area if you have one of those areas that's heavily populated with a lot of records. And Bill also said it's highly important that there can be no substantial distortion. And he, he said, we want to keep enlarging on this for the sake of full-length history to come. Nell Wing was our first archivist. And Nell started when she was young, and she recently passed away recently for a person like me is the last decade, because I was born 350 years ago. <laughs> and what she said was that in the 70s, she said about wading through and organizing mounds of accumulated correspondence and historical records. And embedded there is the implication that an archives and an archives repository are not like libraries. These repositories hold records for us that are excretions of our activities, things like minutes and so on. They are, an, they are evidentiary items. They show what we've been doing in order to deliver the message to the alcoholic who still suffers. Nell also said, the fantastic success of AA is like a big puzzle, and there are pieces that you know fit in, but you don't know where until you look back into the past, and these kinds of activities help us to do that. The Western Washington Area 72 repository is located in Tacoma, and I think Dean may, Dean, are you here? His beloved Christine is here. <laughs> he manages the repository for us. Oregon Area 58 has a team that includes Hal 
and James, and they have a repository that's really world class. If you're in the vicinity sometime, you might want to visit it. And we have a partner from Area 92, which is Eastern Washington, who's here. And we have Joel, who is our Pacific Region Trustee. Raimundo is the current delegate for California Northern Coastal. These are people that know about the value of a repository. So although this is a large building that you see on the screen, which is located on St. Helens at the intersection with 4th, we occupy about 1,000 square feet on the first floor with easy access and locked doors between the collections that are valuable and the outside. We have a humidity problem because there are outside walls and Dean would explain that we have two dehumidifiers that are active. Uh, they're electrical in nature and they subtract quarts and quarts of water every other day <laughs> at our repository to keep the humidity levels in tolerable range for the collection. And Dave Cantrell is here. He's a past area archivist who, who can share with us, if you haven't uh, collected this information already, what the tolerance ranges are for temperature and humidity. It's really important in our work. So at the repository, we have a collection of things that mirror uh, what's suggested in the archives workbook. How many of you have an archives workbook? Outstanding. It's available for free on the internet as a download. It's available as a hard copy. It's useful to have both probably. Uh, but one of the pages says that we have service material about AA. We have photographs. This uh, history book that we had 24 copies of contains some of the items in our collection, including photographs of meeting locations, early buildings that were used by the founders of AA in 1939 inside Washington. The workbook suggests that we maintain a, a collection of directories and meeting lists, newsletters, which are very valuable. One time, our area was considering getting a high-speed digitizer, which would permit you to digitize and audio tape 90 minutes worth of meeting in six minutes. So the productivity boost is really great. But we had this question about, are we going to own property? because it was more than $1,000 for this device. And there was a letter in one of our newsletters from the General Service Office. The experience there is very rich and very useful. And it said, well, for equipment such as this, it's sort of like pencils and erasers. It's not property. And that clarified and headed off a long discussion to reach a conscience because we trusted the experience of other areas that uh, had been deposited at the archives repository in New York. So you may want to make sure that you use that resource. It's really valuable. So I'm not going to go through each one of these lines or we won't finish. Um, but they're there and they're in a handout. We have some uh, colorful handouts, and we have some black and whites if we run out of the colors, okay? Western Washington Area 72 currently has three history books. And I was thinking this morning about the pyramids, and there are three pyramids, and these are our equivalent. It takes a lot of effort and a lot of time but then the information's available for a long, long time. 
One of the past delegates from Missouri came to an archives quarterly and spoke to us about her experience in moving to Western Washington from Missouri. And she became the chairperson of the board for the Seattle Intergroup. And she said one of her first stops when she's got a new position is at the repository to find out what decisions have been made in the past, what topics have been settled, and get the framework for topics that may be reconsidered after a passage of time. So we should encourage people in our rotation cycle to take advantage of our history book, take advantage of the archives collection at a repository and turn it into a living example of how we can help one another to stay sober and keep this thing going. The wisdom that's contained in repositories throughout this country is very powerful like the ocean. It's kind of there, but if you don't visit it, you don't think about it too much. You may see a picture of it, but the power is awesome. And it's really an important resource. I didn't always think like this, but you get involved and you find out and then you want to share the good news that you don't have to be afraid of relapsing. You don't have to be afraid of AA going away. I served as the 18th archivist in Western Washington. There were 17 before me that were doing this stuff, and I was blown away at their accomplishments. Okay. So, Everett K. produced the first, the first of our history books. It was actually a booklet, and it was called The History of Western Washington State, Alcoholics Anonymous. In 1986, we were still one area for the whole state, plus part of BC, plus the northeast corner of Oregon has a place that participated across the river with people, with people from western or eastern Washington. And we have part of Montana uh, at that time. And so this book in 1986 was available for sale and they had enough copies um, to handle the pre-sales demand but not enough copies to handle all the demand between 1986 and when the green edition came out. Now you'll notice that those second two editions have a different title than the booklet. Our Stories Disclose is the name of the two editions that followed the booklet. We're contemplating a third edition now, and we'll talk about that on coming slides. The first book had 109 pages. It was offered for sale in 96. It was reprinted in 77. The second book was a hardcover. The, soft, the booklet was like a the service manual is. You know what the service manual covers like. And the booklet was like that. It wasn't paper, strictly. It was more durable than just paper. But it wasn't hard either. It had 496 pages. It went on sale in 84. There was only one printing. It paid its own way which was a big question, would it do that? And a lot of the inspiration for this accomplishment came from production by the General Service Office of Dr. Bob and the Good Old Timers, and as Bill, excuse me, pass it on by um, members of the fellowship, including Mel B. from Toledo. <clears throat> The area got all the surplus from the uh, revenues of this book. It sold out. I heard earlier as we opened, just before we opened, 
that one of the participants today has a copy of this brown first edition stories disclose and it's a collector's item now it goes for hundreds of dollars online because it's not really available don't recommend selling it though it's more fun to use it and now we have a green book this one it has 652 pages 584 group histories can you imagine 584 groups preparing a history and submitting it and how long it takes to reach the folks and to get that done so like the pyramids this is not an overnight project pyramids took 10 to 20 years this took about three plus some earlier time spent developing interest in doing it and we'll cover that in a little more detail coming up so anyway revenue exceeded costs again the area received the surplus it's not sold out yet we have extra copies at the repository some part of the thousand square feet are being used now to store the extra copies and the going price for those is 750 those that were handed out today uh, came from the steering committee that guides the archives work in Washington Western Washington and they wanted you to have access to these books in your repositories at Atlanta we saw a copy of this green book on display with other area histories how many here have area histories how many areas are considering an area history state history thank you with three areas thank you which one which state thank you excellent maybe this will help you can call me or I can connect you with those that are more knowledgeable Hal, Dave, people like that have already done this we have plenty of time to prepare for it if you look at this chart it says we started around 1939 with that red left circle and about 25 years later Everett Kay's booklet came out 21 years after that our stories disclosed came out the first edition of our stories disclosed came out similarly 21 years after that the second edition came about and we're contemplating producing one now but it's only been about 12 years of new history that isn't documented yet so I'd like to point out that below the boxes it took 15 months to produce the book it took 36 months to produce the book and it took 36 months to produce the second edition and ATP is on the left side of the bottom box the bottom left corner says ATP and it means authority to proceed so the production part starts with the area saying we want to do this and the right corner of the box says it's available done deal now so right now we're in a project that runs on a timeline like this that matches our lessons learned from earlier work and you can see that we started in 2015 and a history questionnaire was distributed at the assembly in Seattle last year in October and that was followed by another accomplishment which is a survey that was accomplished in July and will be followed by a survey at the assembly involving more people we call that the define phase probably one of the most important things about producing this book is making sure that it matches the interest of people who are potentially going to buy it we need to ask a few questions they're not a whole lot of them but we need to ask a few questions I'll show you in a minute 
And that will prevent producing something that nobody's interested in. Okay. The next phase is develop it. So we have to prepare a motion and get permission from the assembly to proceed. That says we're all united. We've reached substantial unanimity on we want to do this large-scale project. We're going to support it. And then you ask for the raw material to come in as histories. You edit this stuff so that it looks like it came from one writer. And you publish. You go into the third phase, which is organize and produce. So organize goes like this. We have 43 districts now. And there are a lot of communications that are necessary to keep in touch with over 600 groups. And different groups have different rates at which they're generating this information. It depends on how busy they are, how big their history is, all sorts of things. And you just have to communicate, communicate, communicate. And so the people that produced books before in Area 72 had regional coordinators to cut down on the amount of travel and time that it takes any individual member to get the communication cycle going. Okay? These two slides, and I'm not going to go through them in detail, they're very busy with words, but they're very important, and they are the history questionnaire that you can download from aa.org. And it's at the portal for the archives, the General Service Office archives. We had a, a customized version of this. Vicki from Arizona talked to us yesterday. And Vicki has another customized version of this. And so it's adaptable list, OK? And it's used in our area. Here's the handout that asks the critical questions, um, which help us to know what people want. That upper left box says, Check your preference. Do you want a brand new book that starts from 1939 and covers up to a certain period of time, like 2018 or 2020, which is to be determined in a later phase? Or would you rather have a new volume that goes along with a green book that permits more and richer content to be produced? but doesn't have to deal with the constraints of a book being under 600 pages. Another question is, do you want a hardcover book? Do you want a booklet? Or do you want an electronic book? Another question is, do you want to see histories of our committees in the area, like public information, literature, grapevine, corrections treatment, accessibility, or do you want to maintain the pattern and just go with the group histories and the area level history? Another question is, are you willing to buy it? That's a real important question. I got it. Okay, so here are some results that we got from 53 people who were at the area committee meeting in July in Kent. You can see the uh, substantial unanimity threshold, and we reached it on hardcover. 43 participants in the survey said they preferred a hardcover, cover, 10 said no. 23 said that they wanted a soft cover, 30 said no. 22 said they wanted an e-book, 31 said they didn't. Some of them said they wanted all of them. <laughs> Some of them said, in these comments at the bottom, we want a hard copy and we want an e-book so it's searchable, okay? The committee needs to prepare a proposal and offer it to the assembly probably in 2017 in October. 
which will definitize what we're going to do to to say, yeah, we've reached substantial unanimity at the area level. Here's another one. I'm running out of time. But we only have a few slides. We reached substantial unanimity. 87% said they were willing to buy. 7 said they were not. Most want to include appointments, and we reached substantial unanimity on that. Some said they wanted to exclude appointments. We were almost toss-up, not didn't reach substantial unanimity on new volume and new book. So you can see why we're going to the area to get to see how close we are to substantial unanimity on all this stuff, how close we are to this, because it's a relatively small sample. It's like one-tenth of the responses we're likely to get at the assembly. Then the committee that's been working on this, and it's chaired by our archives chair, area archives chair, uh, had some actions that they have planned. Some are done, some are starting, some haven't started yet. They're available in the handout. There was a request in July for action by the district archivist. We have a number of district archivists that meet four times a year with the archivist and the uh, archives chair. And they need to be part of the process of getting this work done. And then there are some requests for action to the area committee. The DCMs and the standing committee chairs need to be prepared to help with this organization that's going to have to communicate across rotations because we rotate on a two-year cycle and we don't want to have to start over at the very beginning every time with every rotation. There are likely to be three rotations. Some conclusions go like this. Our projects have been self-supporting. Money's not the problem. Um, loss of historical information is a problem. And it's important to use the available resources. I'd like to thank Richard. I'd like to thank each of you. This is a terrific turnout for this, and I'm open to questions now. Uh, thank you all for coming. Yes, do you have your presentation on a thumb drive or in some form that you could share with us? Yes, I mean, I have, a, I have a, the information. I don't have a thumb drive. Can you repeat the question? Oh, yes, thank you. The question was, is this available electronically? The answer is yes. Do I have a thumb drive to do that right now? The answer is no. But if someone has a thumb drive and wants it, I can make that happen. Yes. Um, my, name's, oh, I see, I see that. Go ahead. my name is Mike. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Mike. Hi. Wonderful presentation. I'm Thank a New York you. for Area 8 in San Diego. I'm wondering what your financial support is from your area for archives for your budget. We have a budget that a budget line that's like five hundred and sixty-five dollars a month for the archives repository. We have a budget like five hundred dollars per year um, to maintain the to sustain the supplies that we need to, for archival work, the boxes that are acid-free, and so on. Expenses for travel and hotel and and meals. Mileage, hotel, and meals are reimbursed for area business events. And that varies depending on a lot of factors, like where the event is, how far somebody lives from it, and so on. Hi, my name's Gail, and I'm the archivist. Hi, Gail. Hi, and, and um, uh, trustee for the National A Archives Workshop. On our web page, this was fabulous, by the way. Thank you. This is going to be so helpful to so many. Um, we have a wiki, and if you will get with Theron, I will. we will put that on the web page so that everyone, even those that aren't here, that when you go home and you tell people about how great this presentation was, everyone can benefit from it, including you know, the, the handout, and maybe we can even get the audio. So please be sure you check with Theron and get that 
to us. Thank you. So do, do we know how hard it is or easy it is to access the wiki? Because these folks won't know what I know uh, when I talk to Theron. Is it Akron dot No, I think it's, I think it's right on the web page, isn't it? It's right there. If you go to the National AA Archives Workshop webpage, oh. you'll see Wiki there. Uh, it's, it's a vision that we have to even be able to reach Europe and the Middle East okay. and all the places that maybe don't have an event like this. So Thank we want to get as much. Yeah. Thank you. So it's the National AA Archives Workshop webpage. My name is Esmini, and I'm the archivist. Hi, I'm the archivist for Area 56. And uh, I'd like to know how your projects have been self-supporting. In your handout, it appears that the writing, uh, the history project is self-supporting. How so? And I also have a thumb drive now that's been donated to me. Oh, excellent. Would you like I'll, it? <laughs> yeah. I'll load that for you when this is over. Thank you. Um, The, um, the two history books that I know about finances on are the first and second edition of our stories disclosed, and there were pre-sale commitments. So you find out from the publisher how much it's going to cost. You determine how many you're likely to sell, and there's some suspense about that. But just like all the conventions that we have and the workshops that we have, there's always suspense. There was suspense probably for our host committee. And um, you just set a target, and it sold for $10, which is a real deal at today's hardcover prices. And uh, we had so many pre-sale commitments that were honored at the sale price that the books were able to pay their own way. There was a printing, overprinting error. We didn't want to run out like we did with the brown book. And so we have extra copies that haven't sold yet. Um, in Joel's report to us about what was going on with the first edition, special edition that was available of the big book, um, there was an over, over printing. And that'll work out with time. So the same thing. So you set a target, you either sell them all or you fall a little bit short, but it's fairly easy to break even as long as people keep the commitment to pre-sales. Get the name, the address, the amount, and then deliver. Just take some effort because some people move. My name's Bruce, I'm an <clears throat> alcoholic. Hi Bruce. And I'm an archivist for an intergroup area in Southern California. And Mike, I heard on the very first day in one of the talks that the, the principle of rotation can somehow maybe be waived a little bit on, for archives because it is a real problem when, That's when right. the archivist has the, all that knowledge. So, but I can't find that where I heard that or where I read that. Can someone answer that for me? Well, we recently did that. In uh, 2012, we had our first sitting archives chair and our first sitting non-rotating archivist, who's our current archivist dean. Um, and I can send you quite a bit of background information on that if you let me know. Anyone who's in, anyone else interested in that? Uh, if you look at the, if you look in the Thanks, AA guidelines Gail. and in the uh, archives workbook. Uh, GSO recommends non-rotating or, or very, uh, very slow, slight uh, rotation whatsoever. So you can find that both there. Thank you, Thank you very much. Yeah, our Perfect. area really liked the idea that there are two different skill sets required for a vital ar archives activity. One skill set is the administrative part, set up the meetings, write newsletter articles, communicate to the area, let the authority of the area flow through to the people working on archives through the archives chair and then have a skilled leader who's been trained and understands archival science and can maintain the repository like our ABLE archivist currently does. Uh, our archive, and I have a table that says here's what one position does versus the other position because we split and I can share that. But the guidelines are important. Last question. Last question. 
My name is Deanna. I'm from New Mexico, Area 46. Uh, how come your second edition started with 1939 and the other one started with 41? Dave, do you know the answer to that? You know, that's a question that I know I noticed that, but I never found out an answer, never even asked. The, the first, uh, 1939 was, 1939 was when the first request for information about anything in Washington occurred, and 41 is when we had our first meeting. And that's the difference between the two. Thank you, Dave. There you go, that's a skilled archivist for you. Thank you.